you know, hard, hard man to get a hold of. Yeah, and, um, I'm my core log, you should say, I'll give it out in a minute. Nah, let's not get it out. all Josh Mansell in Texas, and that's why Optus went down the other day. That court case um, getting sorted must be a massive relief for you. You know, I knew I was innocent the whole time, and just trying to prove that I was a good person, and, um, and that, and trying to fake being happy for 10 months is pretty hard, so. <laughs> I think it's just, for me now, it's just, a, you know, m the mind's be like good now, it's yeah. where it what needs to be, and I think I just want the body to follow, and I think that's all the pre season's all blessing now, and mm. give back, and. Um, I want to talk about your time at the Roosters. I feel like you're one of the most misunderstood players that I know. Yeah, it's just it's just a rodeo in my life. Like it's been full on since I was 18. And you enjoy being a footy player um, more than a farmer. There's two questions answers to that. I think. If you could just see what's going in my brain right now. Yeah, it's just been. I've seen it. <laughs> I can see it. It's an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the Let's Trot Show. Again, thank you so much for all your support. Keep those followers coming through. Make sure to subscribe. Click that five star button as well. And uh, we've got so many cool guests coming up as well. So for today, we've got Latrell Mitchell, another cool guest. Latrell. Latrell me. How are you, brother? Good, bro. How you going? Yeah, it's, it was hard to get you on the show. You got me. Finally, finally. Yeah. And uh, what have you been up to this off season? Nah, not much, bro. <laughs> not much? <laughs> not much. As you can tell, a bit full here. But no, not much, bro. Just cruising. You know, family time, a um, bit of cattle time, farming. How is the farming yeah. going? Yeah, it's good, really good. You want to give me any tips about farming? No, you don't even know what a cow is, mate. I do know what a cow is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. You obviously got training next week. Yeah, Monday. Have you done any running since? Nah, it's making me tired just thinking about Monday. But nah, I'm excited to get back. Obviously, everything else has sort of fell into place now, yeah. and it's just time to get back in. When was the last time you've done a full preseason? Obviously, playing the uh, finals footy five years, years in a row. Probably five years. 2019, I think, was probably the last time. So full pre-season out in uh, Matraville, your new high-performance centre there? Yeah, Matto, um, be there and a bit of Redfern as well. I think they've been splitting up between because of the field, but yeah, keen, doesn't matter really. What's uh, really. what's the new centre look, look like? Yeah, it's mad. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's probably suits now that, you know, we're trying to go to another level and having that facility sort of makes, you know, you see all the other good teams like Penrith have built, for, you mm -hmm. know, a great facility and a great team, junior system. So I think, you know, we're in the right direction now and, yeah, it'd be good to go back and just have that fresh sort of new home to go to every morning and, uh, you know, not have to worry about going into the borough in Redfern and, you know, not knowing what time it is because you, <laughs> you don't see the sun <laughs> for three hours. Or, and you you're, know. Always, you're always late to train, sir. So. Yeah, no worries, mate. First, <laughs> first one there, to be honest. You are the Jason. first one there. You are the first one there. Well, per tradition of the show, our friends from Shoe Grab want to gift you an awesome pair of kicks. So I know you're sponsored by... The guys at Nike, oh, so I made sure it's a pair of bike shoes. Open it up. Let me know if you if you like them and if they're to your I taste. Like them I, I know no. you got I know you got high taste. So here we go. That's it. Yeah, how good? Pandas how good. That's it. <laughs> I can't wear them. I'm an Addy boy. Thanks, so. Fox. Anyway, you enjoy that. Thanks, you big follow shoe grab there. That's it. Obviously, you've been quite quite busy in the off season. Uh, you've got that monkey off the back with that. That court case um, getting sorted it must be a massive relief for you. Yeah, bro, it's a long ten months. I think the uh, the just dragged on, man. Just trying mm. to, you know, I knew I was innocent the whole time, and just trying to prove that I was a good person and, um, and that, and trying to fake being happy for ten months was pretty hard. So, but yeah, I'm glad that's over. It's it's something you know it's been weighing on me for a long time, my family, and uh, probably my family more so. But mm. yeah, mental mental drag and just a yeah, just a sort of a yeah, a ball and chain that I didn't need and. You know, I've got a lot of them hanging around, so, you know, it's not one I wanted, so. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's great, you know, great outcome for not only myself, but a statistic in Aboriginal people. And, um, yeah, and thought, Jack. Yeah, yeah, and Jackie boy, that's what I'm saying. So we both went in together and, you know, <clears throat> if I was to play poke, I'd tell you, I'd give it away every time if I knew, you know, <laughs> I was that happy coming out and, uh, yeah, just didn't want to make any further comment on it at yeah. the time and I'll bring out a statement sooner or later, you know on how I feel about it and, um, but yeah, it was just something that I really needed to get off my back. Did all the media perception around it, um, obviously you're, you're guilty straight off the bat. Yeah. As soon as your name's in the media, yeah. you know, Latrell Mitchell arrested, like, I know deep down you know you didn't do anything wrong, but did that play a massive effect in your mindset? And, yeah, you know, footy was a big thing, obviously trying to perform every day and turn up and knowing that's still hanging over your head. And mm. I know we adjourned it for you know, a later date, which is perfect, because you, know, you don't want to try and focus on it through, but, Looking back on it now, I felt like we should have got it over and done with at the time. And But, yeah, it is what it is. And um, I think the whole preparation for our solicitors and everything to have that whole time to prepare well and uh, went in there and, you know, got the job done. So, yeah. Speaking of the day itself, like when the the detective, or the sergeant, I should say, went on the on the stand and admitted giving false evidence. Like, yeah. 
What, how did that make oh, you we're feel? in shock too. I, I honestly thought that, yeah, I didn't know what he was on about. And then, because like well, they had all these you know, terms of criminology and all this stuff that was going on. <laughs> but me and Jack had no that. idea. And we're just like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't really want to comment too much more on it. And, you know, it is what it's done now. And um, just focus on good energy now, brother. Yeah, so I'll come and see you. Like. 100%. Well, I just, like, I, I don't want to keep bringing it up. I just, just the night itself, how it happened. Like, you yeah. know, you're having a good time with Jack. Um, oh, it was a 30th birthday yeah. and you just want to hang out with him and because they threw the birthday boy out, of course, everyone else is going to follow and um, and that's it's pretty much where it started and yeah, a violent intent only started when the police got involved and but yeah, it is what it is now and uh, you know, I want to move on with myself and and I'm happy and now I'm back to being so, Latrell yeah. Mitchell and you know, I can't wipe a smile off my face now so yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. Well, we're Jackie boy, uh, your new teammate for next <laughs> season, like... You win a court case together. The week after, you got his wedding. How yeah. was that? Yeah, that was good. That was a good turnout. It's actually good to see him sort of be vulnerable and I didn't cry around. I know the only time we sort of cry around was in World Cup when we didn't want to leave, but we ended up getting the job done there and then coming back and just having that um, yeah, and seeing him you know, with his love of his life and Monty. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it was very special and I got to share it with him and I thank him for you know letting me come along and my partner too. So... Yeah, it was really enjoyable. Uh, and then, yeah, a few beers went down really well. And, uh, yeah, it was just good to be a part of, bro. So. And then the week after, you got pre-season. Yeah. New addition to the club. What's it's he going to bring to your team, you reckon? Yeah, I think he's just going to bring that, <laughs> just that extra level you know, of just professionalism. He's very professional in everything he does. And he's just a goofy volunteer, you know. He just, he's real nervous. So when I've he's never nervous. Him, he, I've never met him personally. But when he's nervous and he's laughing, you know, and he, that's when he's nervous. <laughs> hey, and it's just, it's just so fucking funny to be around. Like, he's just great energy. And he's sort of like, you know, like... The space kid at a time. Oh, I'm a space kid at a time. Nah, Gina. Big Jackie. Oh, yeah. Nah, but it's just like you think too much, you know, and, and then it gets you sort of stuck on something and then you just laugh. And, man, it's not yeah, it's the same, too much, mate. I'm telling you. you care too much, you yeah, know. You want much. everything to go right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, nah, no. it'll be good, Buzzy. I think he's going to add a lot to the team and, and being, you know, the person he is, he's just so genuine and, and caring and that's what South Sydney Rabbitohs is about. That's the identity that, you know, that I live by, that brand lives by, and uh, and I love being a part of it, and that's why I can be who I am. But for Jack to come along and and just fit in and, and just do that and do his job, and I know he's going to do his job well, and um, and that's all we need. That's all the young fellas need to see, and I think he's going to bring a lot of influence, and um, especially for me and Cody as well, like just by helping out and Camo and Cookie and. Um, yeah, it'd be something just very special. Like you said, we needed another player that was missing, and um, I think he's a, he's a great piece to be added. I see a lot of similarities with you too. Both passionate, very physical, ball runners, ball runners. Where do you see him playing? I pass better than Jack. You reckon? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, okay, we'll go. We'll go with that. No, I'm doing that. <laughs> but where do you see him playing? You reckon uh, you'll be in the centres or do you see? Yeah, no, it's a. Be, be that's. I think that's the million dollar question. Yeah. Also, no. Are we going to see the number one? Uh, Everyone's on mad on me going the centre, aren't they? I said that's the million dollar. Well, question. I don't know. Like for me, um, it kind of makes sense. Like you obviously start in the centres um, and. I feel like I was you, never you, a centre growing up. That's what I mean. Like, I've never played centre until 2018 or well, 17. Well, you made that position your own at the Roosters. Yeah, well. And I feel as soon as you make that positional change, you're instantly, in my eyes, you're the best centre in the world. So, But I don't see how like someone could change the point of view at fullback when, you know, this year we were top of the ladder, I was top, you know, leading try, whatever it was. It's just, it's just perspective changes all the time, true, you know. True. And like if I'm going to play a position, I play it in 100%. And just because I don't run 200 metres, but, you know, then 200 metres comes into a point where, oh, there's three tries this or there's two yeah. tries. With you that. have your own strengths. Yeah. So that's where I chime in. I don't need to go, all right, that's what I got big wingers for. You know what I mean? Oh, got AJ, yeah. big AJ on the wing there, <laughs> you know? Well, so what, you just take the carries and you'll score tries. That's all I say. What do you love playing about fullback? No, I just love the freedom. You get the ball, you know, whenever you want. But I know a lot of halfbacks don't kick to me because I know, you know, I can run anywhere. I can, you know, something just pops up out of nowhere. And it's just one of those instinctive things that pop up. And and just being able to have the ball at, you know, second phase play and, got, you, know, to, you know, off Cody Walker, you know, the best, you know, 5'8 in the game, you know, and you just, I mean, oh, every time we get the ball off him because, you know, if it's a good pass and I know I could put someone away and, you know, it's just, it's just, that knock-on effect that I love, you know, and just being around, popping up anywhere. and Getting the when, ball. Yeah, and just getting the ball and that's it. And that's what I love about it. But, yeah, and I don't want to tackle, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm tackling, then something's going on with my defence line, isn't it? Well, pretty, uh, we pretty much got the answer. So uh, I guess we're going to see you in the number one jersey. Yeah. So you're putting your best foot forward for I'm that. I'm telling everyone right now, you know, I'm coming. Oh, you've got a star-studded line-up next year, that's for sure. Um, yeah, Vegas. Vegas, yeah. Well, are you excited for that or yeah. what? That'll be good. I think Jack misses out because he's got two more games. He comes back on the Chooks, Chooks game round two, I think. 
Why is that again? Sorry. Oh, uh, <coughs> what did we do last? We gamble, but we won't bring it up. Uh, we won't bring it yeah, up. We won't bring it up. Good energy. Yeah, hundred percent. So when do you go to Vegas? Do you, have you got the itinerary? Nah, yet? not yet. I think it's late Feb. Ever been before? Nah, I've been to America, but nah, no, no, no Vegas. Oh, my Vegas is the best place in the world. I, I could have went like, twice actually in 1890 when we won the comp. Oh, yeah, that's I right. I just brushed it, went furry. Oh, yeah, you're, you're quite fellow, aren't you? No. You don't like the big lights? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> now I do. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll be the Vegas, mate. If you need a hook, I'll just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to last year, um, obviously, you know, a bit of a disappointing year. Uh, what goals do you have for your, for next year for yourself and for the team? <laughs> I think it's just for me now, it's just, uh, you know, the mind's be like good now. It's yeah. where it what needs to be. And I think just want the body to follow. And I think that's all the pre-season is all a blessing now and mm. get back and, and have a crack, have a dig and just get my body right now, you know, and, and let the, let it follow where I need to go. And I just think for, yeah, the next year, it's just about focusing on, you know, just this now and tomorrow. And then obviously the Monday they get through too. And, but yeah, I'm excited and yeah, it's just up to, you know, a lot of fresh faces around too. So it'd be good to get a part of that and, Sean Kempy and the boys, and um, but yeah, I'm very excited. <clears throat> Don't know what what's ahead, but I feel like there's something coming. So I feel like that too, man. Pretty exciting year coming up. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your time at the Roosters, and uh, as a fan, teammate, I notice that you're a completely different beast every time you play your old club. Um, and why is that? Is there is there something in there? I know you know you had you had two great seasons there, two premierships, like, and I feel I like spent... you go to another level every time you play. Like, why, why is that? No, I just feel like I, I, <coughs> I just let them know what they're missing out on and what they, you know, let go. I suppose in a way, and it, it sounds a bit like resentment. Of nah, <laughs> not 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 in a way. It's more just fact. I just I just love playing like opposition, especially like you know someone that meant a lot to me as well. Like and yeah, Roos has meant a lot at the time, and um, you know I felt like I give a lot to that club, and yeah, I just walked. I think just leaving that club on the you know terms I didn't want to leave on but mm. at the end of the day it was for the better and um, you know I'm at home now at South and you know, I've got a great position now to change a lot of mindsets and you know and be an, I guess a mentor and a um, you know an influence in a lot of young fellas lives and um, but I just feel like <clears throat> yeah coming to South now I've just been able to be myself and you know, not have to you know, prove to anyone who I am and um, yeah and what I stand for because I'll get back every day from South you know from CEO down from Russell down and mm. Yeah, it's just it's just good to be able to be yourself and, and not have to you know change your colours you know whenever you know come under the pump and did you feel like you were yourself at the Roosters? No, I felt like I just couldn't be you know you know I was always I'm always proud follower and always proud Indigenous man. I just yeah I don't know it was just I was I just dynamic change. It was just bit. yeah exactly right. And I just mm -hmm. felt like a lot of people didn't understand why I went back home to Taree every time I got a chance. So every time uh -huh. I play you know I just stayed built. I was 18, so I was, moved away when I was 15. Yeah, three years later, I'm playing first grade. So it's just, you put that in perspective. You want to, you know, I always wanted to get home, what grounded me. And that's what kept me in good stead to this day. And that's why I feel like I'm, I'm a good person myself and I'm, I'm a good bloke. I'm proud of that. And and that's what, you know, Tari does for me and, and what I'm connected to. And that's, yeah, where my mum and dad lie as well. They they stay there and uh, it's a great anchor to have. You're, well, you're one of the most passionate players in the game. There's no doubt about that. And uh, touching on, <coughs> obviously, you won two premiership at the Roosters. You're chasing a third with Rabbitohs. What's yeah. motivating you to get that third? I think the feeling at South, you know, how, you know, much more it means in a sense where community, everyone goes for South. If it's not your first, it's your second team. Mm. And um, just having that feeling, just sort of trying to chase that and trying to accomplish something special at, at such a unique club. And, you know, it's got probably the most premierships in, you know, the NRL history. So, you know, to add another one to that, but my name in the books as well. And, um, yeah, maybe a Clive Church along with that. 100%. That'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be nice. Well, obviously, South as well, like they put a lot of time and effort in, like, you know, Indigenous culture. And, yeah. You know, I learned so much my, <clears> my first two years there and that I never, never knew about. And obviously, being mates with you as well, you've taught me a lot along the way. And that must, having that, you want to repay the club back as well in a way. Yeah, exactly right. Like everything they've been able to sacrifice for me and give to me. And, you know, I just want to sort of, you know, I haven't delivered since I've been there in a sense where, you know, a comp is something that everyone wants. and. You'd be hard on yourself about it. Like yeah, you had some, I, I you had some kind of unlucky injuries. Oh, hundred percent. Like I've never been injured until sort of you know had that un unlucky incident. You know, with the against power. Yeah, mm. and it was just just an accident. You know, freak. And yeah, just ever since then it's just been up and down. And yeah, I've never been able to battle injuries the way I have now. So, but it's made me more, I guess, resilient and mentally stronger. And anything that sort of pops up, and mm. and then obviously this at court stuff. You know, yeah. you throw an axe at me now, and I'd be you know sweet and come out the other side of it. And, as a mate, um, I feel like, I don't think I've ever told you this, but I want to tell you now, I feel like you're one of the most misunderstood players that I know. 
Um, hurts me in a, it hurts me in a way to say that because I know you as a very proud family man and mm. you're proud of your culture. And um, does that take a toll on you? Like when you hear and see negative stuff? Yeah, media, <coughs> well, especially like stuff that's not even involving me, but my name's just attached to it. Like just shit like that just pisses me off as well because I know it's not true. And then, you know, you look at different perspe perspectives of like other stories and the comment sections is like 300 to, you know, 1500 comments when it's literally Mitch's name involved. And yeah, it's just, it's just a rodeo in my life. Like it's been full on since I was Exhausting, 18. And, and all I've done, all I've ever done was come out and just, you know, outlined on what happens in the community and being a black person and being proud of me. And that's, and that's all I've ever done and I've never done anything else wrong but be proud of Blackfella and I think that's why I get crucified most. Does it get about. you? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I've got great mentors. I've got mum and dad and dad's a great person. He, he can, you know, sort of say the right thing and he's a good listener so that's why I always go home and go fishing and sit on a rock and, you know, just tell him everything and that's where you know, that's I get smart. a lot of, you know, got a lot of stuff off my chest and now we run a farm together. It's... Um, it's something we, we argue over more than anything, not footy. There's never footy yarns. You know, we go to the local pub up there and always sit around the old fellas and just never footy to be yarn. That's the rule at the table. And, yeah, they just love it. So that's why I love going home. Yeah, I just, again, I, like I, when, when I heard about that stuff come out on the radio and I don't want to mention his name, but then you get towards the grand final and you win the Ken Stephen medal, one of the most prestigious awards to win for community. Yeah. Like, I just... Yeah, you can't wrap your. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like you can't. Like I don't. A lot of things I do that is off camera. You know what I mean. I don't tend to, you know, host like joist about it or you know just guide it up about it because not. It's not what it's about. It's about being genuine, and a lot of people can see genuine. Well, you didn't do it for reward. No, nah, like, nah. you know what I mean. Well, that's why I didn't. I, and I did. And didn't show up about it. You know, spied. I just didn't want to go there because I didn't feel like a. You know, I was doing it for that the award and um, the Dally M's and I didn't. I didn't see the point in getting up and getting an award for something so. You know, that means so much to me, but yeah, I just didn't, yeah, I don't I know. It's just recognition, just, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, you know, I know that, but you just don't, you don't want to, like, I just didn't want to show up and get it because that's not what I do it for. I do it for smiles for the kids and if I can leave an impact or change the kids' lives, you know, that one day, then I've, that's my job, that's my reward, that's my medal, you know. Mm. Well, you talk to me off camera, I don't know if you want to talk about it now, but <laughs> you are kind of wanting to give them back to those kids and you're setting something up, is that right? Yeah, I'm setting something up now. It's a secret at the moment, but it's, it's, it's very special. It's, I'm excited for it, so it's something that fills my cup up other than football. So, yeah, I'll I'll bring it out one day. I'm not going to... Spill the beans yeah, just yet? Yeah, not yet, not yet. <laughs> well, we'll leave it, we'll leave it later yeah. in the year. Uh, filling up your cup, you're obviously a bit of a farm boy um, outside of the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so Here we go. <laughs> talk to me about that. You obviously go to Tari. Why is Tari so special to you? Yeah, well, that, Tari is a place, yeah, it's, it's like something that I'm connected to. It's very spiritual to me and it's something I, because I, I, I own two pieces of land on Biripai country, my own country, and that's something that I can be proud of as a black man. And um, yeah, it's just, it's good to go home and um, it's my anchor, it's my anchor point, you know, I can close the gates, not let the world in and... Um, and just allow myself to be me and, you know, just my outlet disconnect and just uh, yeah, be Latrell Mitchell on a farm and um, the farmer. No, not the footy player. And it's just, it's just something I can enjoy with my dad. always had a goal at, um, at 12. You know, we used to watch this little show, River Cottage, um, and just go, oh, you know, we should do that one day. Me and my dad used to oh, watch really? it, you know. And that's where the passion sort of started. And, um, and then, yeah, just growing our own veggies, um, you know, and livestock or whatever, just to be self-sufficient and then just started growing. And then my dad sat one day, he was an Aboriginal education officer for 17 years. And then um, he just done his drawing, drew up, you know, in Mara and um, that's where the logo started. So, and then I, yeah, then I just started, all right, well, and I, <laughs> it was a funny story, actually. I um, had a few beers, to, you know. And I just woke up one day and the auction was on the next day and the house that I wanted to buy for mum and dad, but they didn't know anything about it. So I just said, just get up and get ready. Because we used to live in um, in land council like homes, like Aboriginal homie. And then, <coughs> yeah, we um, I woke them up and I said, get ready and just go over this address here quickly and um, I'll, um, yeah, and just meet the bloke that I'm talking to there. And he's like, why? Like, you know, they're just like in, in their dings going, what the, what's going on? Like, what's going on? And I just said, look, there's... Something over there, and then by the time they got there, the auction was done. I bought the house, and yeah, they signed the papers. Didn't know what's going on. Oh. Just, it was the best call ever from mum yeah. and dad, you know. And that's mum and dad are the, you know, the, your parents are the people that sacrifice most in your life, and, and the only way to repay them was that. That's the only way I knew, and mm -hmm. um, to give them something to be proud of and own, and and that's what you know keeps me in good stead every time I get to go home. And but then we started gradually get the cows on and um, and it just started becoming you know, alive the dream that I've always dreamt of just 
is just there now and it's just at my, you know, at my doorstep. And you wake up every morning thinking, what do I got to do? And how do I go feed cows or where do I move them? And that's just the life I want to live after footy. Yeah, far out. That's a pretty cool story. Yeah. I love that. How many cows you got now? We've got about 40, Ed. 40? And what would you do with those cows? Like, what, so what, we just the... reproduce, buy and sell. And then obviously, um, yeah, then we just do home kills every now and then. So I've got meat all year round. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You haven't given me any. <laughs> Where's it's your checkbook, mate? Where's my... your checkbook? No <laughs> mate, mates, we're right? mates, mate. We're mates. Oh, I hope you build a pagola. <laughs> it fell down. That's true. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> so obviously, 2024 is around the corner. You've got big hopes of having a big year. Back to 23, how do you sum up that year for yourself and the team? Um, I think we started really well. Um, Out of the blocks. Yeah, like unstoppable. Defence was awesome. Um, got injured, you know, going into New South Wales camp. Um mm. Uh, yeah, it was just hard for me to come back and try and find that form again. And, you know, it was a lot, 10 weeks too long, you know, where you know, I wasn't looked after the way I should have been. And, um, you know, but it is what it is. And, um, but yeah, I just couldn't find that, that tick again. And, um, you know, trying to chase that and, oh, it's all right. Latrell's back. Um, you know, we'll be right again. We'll win again. Just the pressure of that got to me a little bit. And, um, but other than that, yeah, I think we just lost, you know, that drive and connection, connection too as well. Yeah. Confidence, you know. I know with the connection, like it wasn't only yourself. You obviously had Junior go down. You had Harley yeah, go down. Yeah, exactly. Like, Nighty like, left. Um, like your, your forwards really cocky. Yeah. So it's a very, very you know tough spot. Like Jai Arrow, especially. You know, Jai was massive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of things going on at the time and that people didn't know about. But yeah, it is what it is now. And it's no make. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses, but it. You know, we got to do what we're doing. Move on, and that's the beauty about rugby league. You just you know. Mm. Put that aside now and just move on from what, you know, mistakes we made and then just learn from them. Yeah, and there was a few distractions as, as yeah. well, obviously. You know, Sammy left just before the finals. Like, did that kind of play a bit of an effect leading to that game? Yeah, 100%, bro. I think just everything that's went on and, you know, you try and, you know, say it didn't affect you as a person, or as, you know, and it started to drip into your personal life and footy. And um, I think, you know, if you're not happy off field, you're never going to perform on. So mm. um, a lot of that trickled into all our lives and, you know, everything that went on just happened. And I guess, um, like I said, true colours come out when pressure's applied. And, um, yeah, that come as a surprise? Or it come as a surprise Yeah, it ra rattled me, I'll tell you what. But it is what it is. And, um, yeah, I'm over it now. And like I said, it's not, they're not losses, they're le lessons. So it's be good to, you know, take them into 2024. Got there. 2024. <laughs> but, yeah, nah, just, um, yeah, very excited, bros. Like, Especially waking up and knowing that Jack White's in your team. Can't wait. What are we going to see South Sydney in 2024 and yourself? A few wins under the belt and chasing. You, what chasing. goals you got? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, brother. Obviously, honest, number one premiership. It's, yeah, it's premiership's always there. It's a long way away, though, you know. And it's about, like I said, you just got to tick off the little things. I just think just being consistent all the way through is going to be a big part for us and making sure we have all our players on the field and that's you know, up to our medical staff now. All right, so now some lighthearted questions, you know, ease up a bit. Um, have a laugh, mate. You want to have a laugh? Is that all right? Can we have a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck on a deserted island with three players. Who would you pick? Uh, Jack. Oh, straight off the bat, Jack. Jackie White. Because he can fish too, so he knows how to, you know. So Both farm boys yeah, are. Yeah, farm boys. Uh, Jack. Survival instincts. Survival. Um, <laughs> who else? Do you go Fox for a laugh? I don't know. Oh. It'd be annoying, I reckon. It'd get annoying. You, you think about it. You're on a deserted island. If you're constantly hearing Fox laugh, you'd probably see you probably want to drown him. <laughs> <you know? laughs> We'd well, be the first fella getting taken because he'd be louder. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not much meat on him, but. Nah, we couldn't eat him. So. <laughs> we'd be all bone. <laughs> uh, you got Jackie boy. <laughs> you can use no, I, was, I don't I was know. Say you can use Fox as a toothpick. But <laughs> <laughs> I the, love you, Fox. Pick the fish out. Right? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't know, bro. I'd just go Jack, wouldn't you? Just go, go Jack. Yeah. Did you go Cody? Yeah, I go Cody walks, but he's frightened the camp. So, or if we're stuck somewhere, he wouldn't sleep. And he's very angry. He's angry he's man. He's very angry man. So we'll be arguing the whole time. <laughs> I suppose that'd keep you alive. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Sure. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, Jack, Cody. Um, me. Yeah, we'll go sauce. We'll bring him along. 100%. Bring, you, bring the jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> the lab sled. <laughs> the lab sled, huh? <laughs> All right, now, 
who wouldn't you want on that island? Uh. That's an easy one, surely. <laughs> I already know one person. <laughs> I already know one person. <laughs> Tom Burgess. Oh, <laughs> Tom, see how bad you be beaten drowned. <laughs> <laughs> we use Tom as a raft. Yeah, yeah we'll float on him. We go Tom there Burgess. Go. Um, who else would there be? Well, you answered the question. Why am I answering it for you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going blank here. <laughs> You'll be too nice. That's yeah, why. That's You're why. too nice. We'll just leave it with Tom. Yeah, we just won't have Tom. Tommy. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've been given? Um, probably just to just stay true to who you are and, and never change when you're under the pressure. Who's that from? from? From wise man. One wise man. The old man. I'll follow, but, you know, and, and prove, I like proving, you know. See you next Tuesday wrong as well. That's from Wayne Bennett. I was going to say that. Wayne Bennett, he, he was obviously very influential in your career. And what did you love about him so much? I just think the the man he could, you know, I got good influence out of him being a good man. And that's what he always wanted. I think that's why a lot of people followed him. And if I had a chance to follow him, I would have. And um, But, yeah, circumstances are different because of South Sydney and the way I love them. And But I love Wayne just as much. And, um, yeah, we have the same passions off field, which, you know, aligned with me. And... Um, and he showed me a lot of respect by, you know, coming to Tari a lot and, you know, showing my family the time of day. And mm. um, But no one knows that, you know what I mean? So um, I remember one story, <clears throat> we were up and this is where I learned to play footy at the front of this bar, this pub. It's where I still go to this day. It's called the Bushland Tavern. And um, so it's all renovated and that now, but this is, used to be this look like, you know, 10 by 10 footy field, little grass area. Mm. And we, that's where me and my brothers learned to play footy and my really? cousins and... Um, <clears throat> you know, mum and dad would be in the pub, you know, having a couple and then we'd just play footy and that's where, you know, we'd have dinner or whatever. But, yeah, there was these kids doing the same thing, my little cousins and that, and Wayne brought them all in. I got them all in and, again, it's Wayne's like, and Wayne bought them fish and chips and, you know, brought out all these drinks and that for them just to have a feed because they just, had you know, little bony blackfellas running around enjoying footy and loving it and they didn't know Wayne Bennett was sitting there and um, they know I come up all the time, but for them to see, you know, it's super coach, you know, and they knew his name, they knew everything about him and, yeah, these kids are only, you know, wouldn't even known in his era, you know what I mean? So it's just it's something very respectful that I found with Wayne and that's why I love him today. That's why a lot of players love him. Yeah. So do you still keep in touch with Wayne? Yeah, we'll talk about it. We never spoke footy, like we never spoke footy. It's always cows and farming and and just, you know, making sure, you know, there's feed all year round or something's going on. You know, I always ask him for advice because he's been doing it for, you know, 30-odd, 40 years, you know, and um, he started with six cows. I've started with four, so... He'd be at 200 head, I'd be at, you know, just at 40. So it's just, it's very special to be a part of and know that you've got a mentor there to help you out. I remember when uh, we beat Parramatta <laughs> <laughs> during the COVID year, uh, was it 2021? <laughs> and uh, he was the last one on the bus. So we had the jukebox with him. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> the best time, mate. Because I was like, you, you obviously were, were coached with him for what, a couple of years Two now. Years, that was my yeah. first year with him and the first time I actually met him. Yeah. And I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was still a little nervous schoolboy you know, around him and, um, but yeah, it didn't take me long to kind of, you know, warm up to him and understand yeah. why. Yeah, easy to so adjust to a person like that, eh? mm. like, especially when you find common ground and, and then if he rips you, he rips you, it comes from a good place and, you know, it's respectful too. And, um, but yeah, mate, he, he love a few players, he'd give it into all the time, but they knew like they get the best out of them. Mm. You'd, you'd have to say it. So that's what's so good about yeah. him. He knows how to deal and with different personalities. His personality is like, he just knew. I remember we got flogged by Panda if I, out at, at Dubbo and we come oh. back. Remember and he just, he rolled in and <laughs> the gym, eh? yeah, shirt off and he's like, <laughs> Fuck it, boys. Don't worry about it. Let's go next week. You know, like just shit like that and pump. Like just, just changed the whole perspective. Then we went on the run. Then for that rest of that year, and then obviously, you know, whatever I happened you after say, that. That's why he's the best. Yeah, <laughs> he's the best, brother. So yeah. So who would be your um, your biggest idol growing up? Um, You'd have a few. Yeah, Matty Bones definitely. I, he was always same, and he knows that too. So um, yeah, he's just one of the players that I loved the instinct and. Then Greg was obviously a you know, powerhouse, so he was good to be, you know, to watch. And then obviously Thurston, and then I got a chance to play with Thurston and Greg in the same team, All Stars. I was mm. only seven, I would have been like 19 in Newcastle too. So it was that was special, and we won that game too. So yeah, it's just something I, I yeah, they you know, sort of paved the way in footy terms. And um, but yeah, I wanted to always make sure I was a proud black man as well. And um, yeah, a few of them did that, and I guess in a sense where yeah, off-field stuff, they've been going really well in their, their point of views and, and how they want to, you know, get their messages across in mental health or whatever it is and give them back. And, mm. yeah, I just wanted to keep <clears throat> sort of keep that torch alive and, and do it better. I want to add to that. Um, 
during your career, especially at a young age, you were compared to GI. What was that like? Yeah, well, I was that only 17. On and yeah. yeah, but always wanted to be myself and play bomb, you know, f for myself and be, you know, that Latrell Mitchell, not GI. Like, I only played the way I play because <clears throat> I had these people to just sort of, you know, get little bits and pieces off, you know, and that's why I can, I can kick, pass. I've always practiced everything and kick goals and, um, you know, cause the first in and then, you know, chip and chat, whatever it is, you know, I used to do that all the time in SG ball and stuff mm. like that and just play instinctive footy like Matty Bowen. But then Greg sort of changed the perspective of how to run a ball and, you know, and the palm come into it. Always had it, but just, yeah, just making sure. You developed that palm. No, nah, I always I had it. Was it. Yeah, yeah, it was always had it, but it's just more like, oh, Greg does it too. Like, and you just throw it out more, and then. Was it fair you looked up to him a bit, Greg? Like, yeah, it yeah. Kind of molded your game towards, you know. Sort of, yeah, in a way, I guess. And then, yeah, just There's a lot of similarities. Yeah, good looking and um, <sighs> strong, <clears throat> strong man, you know. Stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Very strong man. <laughs> yeah. Who's uh, who's your all-time go? Any can be any sport. Um, um, one one player that you really look up to and. Yeah, yeah, I think Kobe, like, Kobe's probably one of the, you know. You don't watch basketball, boy. No, I know, but I just <laughs> always watched him more, you know, always, you know, anything he's said has always resonated, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think him and, you know, rest in peace to the follow. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just someone I sort of, you know, idolise as well, like just the way, the way he presented himself and mm. the competitiveness and, um, you know, always wanted that drive, so he's always had that as well. Did you play any other sports growing up? I played everything pretty much, so just, you know, I've done it and, um, I was pretty good at most. Like, you know, I could I've pick up. I've seen you play basketball. I'll tell you a quick yarn. Like, I've, we'll, I've seen you play basketball. I'll bet you one on one. But even, <laughs> even like we we did this um, leadership camp up in Tweet uh, in uh, Fingal in Tweet Edge, and we we're doing a surfing like thing academy, and we we're like, you know, you practice on the yeah, sand yeah. first. I was like, yeah, right. I, I say. wouldn't know. I've never but surfed in my life. There, <laughs> got there and I just jumped straight out. The boys were going, what the fuck? <laughs> Fox was the knee. He was meant to come. Oh, but the boys were going, imagine? what the fuck? And I'm just going like, because I surfed when I was young for too, so I mucked around. But the boys were just freaking out because they just didn't realise that. And yeah, I would have been like half charged too. So <laughs> better. So, yeah, yeah, and it was just like, just going across the wave. And yeah, just, it was mad. The maddest day ever. But I was just thinking, fuck, you just. Pick him up like that, like motorbike ride and whatever it is, just just straight away, and it's, that's something I've always been good at. So, all right, true or false? You're gonna participate in a fight night. That's what? You're gonna participate in a boxing match. True or false? True or false? Doesn't have to be next year. Doesn't have to be after. Could be sometime. I don't know. Would you ever accept? Oh, the true. Room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll have a go. Can you throw? You're a lover, but wait and see. You're um, a lover. Wait and see, young. Um. You're a lover. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lover, but don't worry. Show me the money. I'm not a lover on the field. You <laughs> say that. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain what the? <laughs> what, can you explain that? Nah, fuck. It's not <laughs> for me. It's not for me. <laughs> we'll let fuck explain it. Um, okay. You enjoy being a footy player um, more than a farmer. True or false? <clears throat> There's two questions. Answers to that, I think. True. I love farming more, but false because footy feeds farming. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Okay, I guess. So I've got to play footy to be able to keep the dream alive until that's... But, but you have to pick one, mate. Okay. You have to pick one. If I could do it every day without stress, no, you know, it'd be farming. I can see that. I can understand why. It's very, you know, peaceful. You know, you're away from a lot of distractions, you know, and you got a lot of alone time. Mm. Cows ain't judging you. They don't talk back. <laughs> they don't talk back. They don't write stories about you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty It's pretty deep, that. Yeah, wow. Okay. Only run it, yeah. That's about it. You haven't been charged by yeah. a cow before? Have yeah. you? Yeah. Well, I, so cows, again, let's just get this right. Mm. Cows are females. Bulls. Yeah. Bulls are. Young heifers are about young fellas. Yeah. So young bullocks come out. So bulls. And then old bullocks are fellas that breed. So we get one bull to service your herd every time. And then because they're in a breed, so you've got to steer their sons like. They come out bull calves, then you you take their nuts out, and then so on and so on. Then you grow them for meat steers, so they the follows you eat. Yeah, you know. If you could just see what's going on in my brain right now, yeah, it's just it's been, I've seen it. <laughs> I can see it. It's an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt you're a proud Indigenous man. Um, obviously played in the Indigenous All Stars a couple mm. of times now. Let's make our Dream or Indigenous All Stars oh, thing. Gee, eh? Yeah, come on. Well, we know number one. You had Matty Bowen. Yeah, I put him full back. Yeah, I put. Um, Matty Singh. Yeah, yeah, I was getting there. Let me get fucking talk. Sorry, I'm getting uh, a bit excited. I'd put, yeah, I put Matty Singh there. I put Greg, um, myself. Don't worry about Hot Jay. You can stay out. <laughs> I'd go number three actually. Greg played four, so <laughs> that's me. Greg, 
Um, who else? Fox on the wing. Yeah. Um, six, Cody Walker. Yeah. I was got I won't you know Cliffy Lyons as well. So there's. I was hard. gonna say yeah. yeah. I'll bring him on fourteen. Okay. Uh, so Cody. Um, what about seven all time? Thurston. Eight, Carl Webb. Um, Beast. Nine. Nine. Yeah, who did you go nine? Um, who did you go nine? What, Travi Waddell? Yeah. Nathan Tra- Peets, maybe? Yeah, Nathan Peets. No, nah, Waddell, because he, he tackles hard. Peetsy. <laughs> oh, Peetsy doesn't tackle Peetsy hard? Peetsy don't tackle hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> he just retired, actually, Peetsy. Yeah, so, well, there you the go. best brother. Travi Waddell. Um, oh. Who's that next? Ten. Yeah, another big bopper. Oh, uh, you got Ryan James or yeah, um, Fafita. Yeah, Fafita. Um, t- oh, Tommy Riley, Rory Lars, or what? Oh yeah, yeah wow, ten. Great rig. Yeah, great rig. Done. Solid. So I'll put him ten, eleven. Um, Chrissy Smith. Yeah, done. He could play. He could play. Yeah, done. great fella too. Twelve. Who else? I don't even want that. Twelve. Who you guys in? Yeah. 12. I'll put Jack White in twelve, so you can play back row. So we'll just go that. Okay, right. go, go, okay, yeah. Yeah, solid, just, solid, yeah. solid. So I'll put him back row. Next to me. <laughs> Thirteen. Um can we claim Cam Murray? No. <laughs> you can't claim no. You claim can't. Him. No. No. But who's a lock then? Yeah, I don't know. Lock's hard. Lock's for it. Arthur Beatson. Arthur, sorry, yeah, sorry, do. Yeah. Oh, Artie. Doing your job for you. No, mate. mate. Artie. 14, what I say, got, yeah. Uh, Cliffy Lyons. Cliffy. 15, I'll have to throw a um, half you, back in the mix, wouldn't you? Or, well, or Cliffy could play that, I suppose. Yeah, you got Cliffy there. Is that it? That's just 13 or are you on 14? Yeah, you know 18? what, we'll just leave it at that because, yeah. you know what, we'll be here all day. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You don't leave all the blaffles out, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? They'll be course. fighting me after this, you know? Well, pretty much picked the team for you, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Our last guest was uh, Bronson Cherry and uh, we've got a bit of a segment that uh, our last guest will write you a question okay. for you to answer, okay? And then you got the opportunity to do it for our next guest. Oh, nice. There oh. you go. So if you want to open that up, let me know what you reckon. I think it's a pretty good question too from what I heard, so mm. um, let me know. Nothing silly, though. Right? Oh, oh, we've had some <laughs> silly ones, but I'm not going to repeat what Foxy wrote. What Fox wrote? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to repeat that. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Say it out loud for me. <laughs> How loud? Not too loud. Do you believe everything happens for a reason? Yeah, I do. I believe if you give good energy, you get good energy back. If you give shit energy out, you get shit energy back. That goes for a lot of people out there. So you attract what you desire. Hundred percent. And I think if you work hard enough, a lot of things come around. Maybe not you know, in the timeline you want, but they eventually do. Yeah, I'm big on that. Like I believe if you, if we truly believe in something, that it will, it will come into fruition. You could have be mucked up there, eh, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was giving it to. Um, did he spell? Did, was he spelling he was right? giving it to before there for spelling. Can, can I say we spent almost ten minutes trying to figure out what he was going to write? Regrets or regrets? Rag? Is it rag? <laughs> nah, nah. You know that movie? What's it called? Uh, yeah, that movie. Yeah, yeah that one. I got no idea. Yeah. Talking about cool. Yeah. <laughs> Done, bros. That was a great question, Bronson. Thank you for that. And now troll. Mm, thanks, mate. Yeah. Uh, just don't take all day for me, please. I can't harm my finger. Oh, yeah. What are you want writing? Cup of tea, huh? Oh. Pinky buddies. Is it good? Good. Very deep. Very deep? Very deep. I like getting deep sometimes. Oh, yeah. for f- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, d- dirty minded, mate. Nice, um, mate. Nice, mate. <laughs> Well, brother, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're a hard, hard man to get a hold of. Yeah. And, um, I'm My core you. log, you should see. I'll give it out. Man. Nah, let's all get it all out. Josh Mansell in Texas, and that's why Optus went down the other day. Well, best, <laughs> <laughs> best of luck for next year, Thanks, brother. Thanks, bro. Grateful you. Love Grateful. You, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Reach around, huh? <laughs>